Hello and welcome back. Sean here, Mountains Garage, Wednesday afternoon edition. I had to stop and think what day this was because I kind of lost track. Working on yet another bead roller project. This one I started Saturday, inspired by uh, the Lassie Metal Dreams, the Lassie's YouTube channel, looking at the style box tube and bead roller that he builds and sells. I was inspired to take that idea and make it my own, and here it is. If I didn't show you now, by the time I bury this up a shaft in there and talk about the details, it wouldn't mean as much. So I stopped, even though I'm right at the fun part where it's either going to work or it's not. <laughs> but either way, so a couple things have happened along the way. One, I put on my swivel foot in the bung that I made and I'm <laughs> I, my goal is to duplicate that style bead roller which sells for $6,600 or more and again make it my own and I will try to calculate the total cost at the end again I got the steel for in a trade so that's kind of washy but it, we're not talking a lot of metal here I know what the shafts and the gears cost because I just bought them this week but the you know, 60 inches of two by four box tubing, which I lied to you in the beginning because I was lied to. It was marked quarter inch wall written in crayon on the side of it. It's actually 3 16 wall. So it's thinner than that. It worked out good in some ways and in other ways we'll see as far as flexibility goes. But like I mentioned, I will weld steel on it until such time it doesn't move on the outside. So, if you watch the videos I'm referencing with the green bead rollers that are for sale, I always focus on the weld on the bung on the front because in the video series, that's not a pretty weld and I'm staring at it all the time, much like I wouldn't mind. So I was nervous when I went to weld this up and I happened to weld the bead of my life. It looks really nice. I'll be forever happy. The one inside is nice as well too. So. I had finished the lower box the other day. Again, it spins like a dream. It's actually ready to run pretty much. The upper box itself, I had to weld a few features into. I had to grind inside so the rear block, which is between the levers back there, can slide easily. And it's welded seam tubing. If I had seamless tubing, if they do make two by four box tubing this thick, that isn't welded, that'd be a lot easier because I spent a lot of time with the die grinder inside, but no big deal. I cut my slots. I learned cutting my slot that it's better to drill a hole and slot all the way one direction than on the top. I drilled the hole in the middle and went three quarters each way, and it's not as accurate, apparently. The tubing isn't doesn't sit in the vise accurate enough, probably, and it wasn't perfect, but that's okay. I fixed it. First thing I did, I forgot to mention, is I put it in the bandsaw and just cut this piece off. This is where the front box will actually drop down out. It's able to go flush here. It'll go as far as it wants, but it really pretty much has to run flush. I don't think I'm going to machine this little bit here to give me more clearance in the throat. I think it'll be fine, but I'm going to test fit it here in a few minutes and let you know. Uh, I found it odd. It actually flat out a little bit on the end all, all on its own, but... I don't think there's a, an issue there. It's not an area that isn't even getting touched when the machine is operating. So it only took me a minute to tell you what I did. It took me a lot longer to do it. There was some figuring out as far as this spring mechanism rides is going to slide up here. This lower cup will be sliding right here. The rear block was just like the uh, blocks I made for the lower, except the drilled and tapped. 3 8 course for the handles that I bought and on the upper shaft the gear is going to sit back away from the collar the collar has to anchor the shaft so the whole thing moves when you loosen up the levers the front block is free to slide in the tubing and the rear is in the slots the spring holding it up and it should move pretty easy but again I haven't tried it yet so that's pretty much all that went on in the rear Obviously, I had to put a lock collar on either side, so the shaft goes with the block. Same on the front. I have two shaft collars, and this piece here, this little 
spaceship looking thing. Took the longest of anything, but it was fun. I ended up taking some eighth inch flat stock. I welded it on each side and then milled it the exact width, centering the shaft in the tube and making it so it slides easy and it's kind of tapered. So it runs in the box tubing, very nice. With the cutout, I was able to grind the entire weld away inside, which needed to go. Forgot to mention that. So it was a lot of work in this little piece of box tube, and I haven't welded, uh, excuse me, ground all the weld off the outside. I could, because there's weld on the inside too, just for looks, I don't know. I had to back here where I'm gonna be reinforcing it. I may just leave that. It's never gonna win a beauty contest anyway. I've already told you about how I made the the round tube itself with Turbo 400 sun tube or Stata bushing. Same bushing goes in the transmission in a couple of places. This is just a 3 8 bung, a 3 8 ready rod, and I can adjust this. I actually got another spring that'll fit inside this if needed. And when I adjust this down, I'll cut off the stud wherever it falls because I don't think it's going to interfere with the handle I have to build here, but obviously I don't want it running into it. But I'm hoping I'll be able to move the shaft just by this hand motion here. So, you know what I mean? Or I could just grab the dies, but I'd prefer to do it up here, I think. And at the last minute, next to my rosette weld, I drilled and tapped eighth inch pipe for an eighth inch pipe grease fitting, which I can access right down through this hole without disassembling using my needle. If you've ever seen a grease gun needle for like getting hard to reach grease fittings and U-joints and stuff right down through the hole, right into the grease zerk, and I can fill that up once a decade or once a century. Uh, again, a shaft collar on the front, the traditional uh, inch and a half, 22 millimeter with a flat spot for the die, and I'm ready to assemble. But I wanted to show this to you before I buried it, probably forever. I thought about well, I don't know if I'll disassemble it to paint it or I'll just tape it up like I did the other one and just paint the outside of the tubing. So it has a lot of bare metal in operation, so it's not a rust concern. It's not going to be out in the weather. So I haven't got that far yet. So let's uh, assemble it and see if it actually slides. All right, we stuck it together. I had to whip up a couple spacers for the handles. The thread was deeper than my hole that I drilled and tapped in the block. I drilled it all the way through and then just ran the tap in until I hit the middle pretty much. I don't have a 3 8 bottom and tap either. I need to get, I have 3 8 fine taper plug and bottom and tap. I bought a three pack on Amazon. I really need to do that for the po most popular sizes because once again, last week I was looking for a 5 16 bottom and tap and I spent three bucks on one Still sitting in the box because I don't need it anymore. <laughs> I got around it, but it would have come in handy today. So, my springs that I use in the front and these cone washers, I was impressed. Monday I had to go to the transfer station, so I stopped by a local hardware store and you know set myself loose into the hardware aisle. And I got some short M10 one and a half. Allen heads for the front to hold the die on and also for the other bead roller. Those are a dollar 45 a piece. The springs, I was so impressed. They had at least 12, assort, 12 drawers of different springs. My only criteria was um, I knew I was going to have a 3 8 stud coming out of my floating block. So I wanted them big enough if I ran an inner and an outer, which is what I currently have. So long story short, I bought a couple three inch springs. They have more, I could go back and get stiffer ones, but if I run just the outer, oh, and the washers are just from the uh, drawer that said finishing washers. I believe that typically they have a screw in the middle and you screw them on to you know, screw something down, make it look fancy. In this case, they're perfectly cupped and work nice and I wanted something that would slide over my slot here, so. In its current configuration, I just barely have the nut started. If I, when I put the nylock nut on there, it's just gonna engage the plastic. And my shaft is floating. And 
Clearance wise, I'm going to put a handle here. It's going to clear this no problem. So I'll probably run the two springs. If I just run the outer, I have to crank it down half of its distance to get it to achieve the same level. As far as the shaft, floating shaft, I haven't even greased it yet. This is just metal on metal. I figured I would probably spray some graphite on it or something. Probably no need. The only resistance left is going to be the gear, and that's not going to cause much of a problem. So I dig that. I think it's going to work. All I got to do now is uh, this works too, my floating foot. Jack the shaft right up and down. Put a little more tension on it. There we go. So now she goes right up and down with the adjuster. If you can see that. She's going up and down. I have to mate the two, and with the shim in the middle, see how the gears pan out. I'll lock the forward and aft in the mid travel and line up the rear gears when I do it. And there was a whole lot of figuring, like the stick out and all that stuff. There was quite a bit of measuring before I put the uh, upper shaft back in the mill and drilled all the little spots for the set screws, but we got it, and she spins nice. At least, it's, at least it used to, there we go. We're good. Break in, you know. Uh, all right, I'm going to continue to uh, try to mate the halves together and mesh my gears, weld on the outside. That probably sounds like a third video. I promised it wouldn't be six part. I didn't even promise that. <laughs> the bead roller videos, like I say, aren't super popular, but maybe someday. I think it's, yeah, we'll see. Time will tell. So anyway, and you can probably figure it out, but to lock it, all you do is tighten these up. And this I can put in any position I want. So when you tighten them up, they're like that. No more movement. Hmm. This is the fun part, I'm telling you. When you, you see an idea and you make it your own way, you know, I didn't reinvent the wheel, but it's fun. So, makes it fun to come out in the garage. All right, I'm back at it, and I'll catch you soon, maybe in a couple days.